Why does narcissistic abuse even take place in this world? A more important question would be, why has it happened to you? Why have you experienced narcissistic abuse? Now, I believe the answer to this question will free you. It will free you from experiencing narcissistic abuse in the future. It will free you from the toxic entanglement you may be in right at this very moment. However, it's easy to confuse this question with a similar question. That similar question is, why are there narcissists? What makes narcissists do what they do? Where do they come from? What do they want? On and on and on, right? These questions happen to be an endless rabbit hole that leads to nothingness. This, these questions baffle the top experts, scientists, doctors, psychologists. Any attempt they make to answer where narcissists come from ultimately ends up sounding like word salad. Well, it's a combination of, of genetic predispositions along with environmental factors and societal pressures and GMOs and global warming. It, wordy way of saying... We don't know. We do not have all of the answers. And so if you focus in that area, at best, it's just going to confuse you on your healing journey. At worst, it's going to keep you engaged with narcissists, thinking that you can somehow solve the problem by being loving, compassionate, understanding of their predisposition genetics or their environmental factors, which is wrong. Let's bring it back to the question that's going to heal you. Why does narcissistic abuse take place in this world? And why has it happened to you? What does it mean? Let's talk. My name is Kevin and this is The Royal Weed. Now, before I continue with this message, I do want to let you know that I take one-on-one appointments, telephone calls, and video calls, Zoom, WhatsApp, FaceTime. It's all available for you down in the description box. Also, I have a coaching program where I coach every day, Monday through Friday. It's live with questions and answers. So if you would like to join a growing community, then be a part of the Royal We coaching program and I will see you in class. Now I'm going to answer why there are narcissists and why narcissistic abuse takes place. And I'm going to do so in one simple sentence. Because of evil. Boom. I could drop the mic in the video right there because that's just the solid truth and we're not going to get past that. Now, I know some of you are going to say, no, 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 Kevin, wait a minute. No, 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 that doesn't work. It can't be that simple. It's not that simple. Just saying there's evil doesn't take into account the, the mental parts and how people just develop in environmental factors and blah, blah, blah. I, I just to stop it. It's evil. Period. End. You see, let me help you out with something. In the ancient world, Prior to diagnoses, psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, uh, whatever, narcopaths, whatever you want to refer to these things as, they simply understood things as being good and evil. Why? Because these are principles that are fundamental parts of this world. They are the conditions, if you will, of living this life. And they've always been. There's always been good. There's always been evil. There's always been darkness. There's always been light. However, what the ancient world did that we stopped doing is they understood that these things are to be separated. These things have nothing to do with each other. They're opposites. There's darkness. There's light. But they exist on their own. Right? And they require each other. In order for there to be darkness, there has to be light. In order to be light, well, there has to be darkness. There's a dichotomous way about the conditions of this life. There is wrong and there is right, and they do not mix. There's a dichotomy. They're separate. There is good and there is evil, and they do not mix. They are separate. One of the things that we have forgotten is according to the ancient literature, God was divisive. He divided these things. He separated these things because they belonged in their separate place. One of the first stories that we have of the embodiment of good and evil that I'm talking about happens to be the story of Cain and Abel, the first two sons born on this conditional earth where conditions of good and evil exist. 
One of the ways to look at that story is to say, well, why did that story take place? Well, I have an idea as to why. Because in order for there to be the conditions of good and evil, we need to be exposed to it. We need to see what those differences are. Well, here you go. Here's two sons, two brothers, Cain and Abel. Both were raised in the same environment. So there's no environmental factors at play. Both are brothers. So there's no genetic differences at play. Both have the same faith because both communicate with God. So that's not an issue. Yet one of them will be a murderer. And one will be obedient and the murderer will kill the obedient one and now we see an image of evil and good that is displayed through the embodiment of humanity the reality is is that's the world we still live in it doesn't matter how you try to diagnose Cain doesn't matter if you try to call it psychopathic sociopath it doesn't matter how you spin it smack it slap it tip it it does not matter it is evil They lived a lot simpler lives back in the day when they just called evil, evil. Now, we need to get to the question, though, why did it happen to you? Why did narcissistic abuse happen to you? That's what we're all waiting for, right? So if you're with me up to this point, awesome. I know I can blabber, but we're going to get to the point. I promise you. The reason narcissistic abuse happens is because of the failure to accept evil. We've been lied to. And I'm going to take it a step further. All the attempts to diagnose and this and that and try to get you to believe that, oh, there's environmental factors and genetic predisposition. All this does is continue to lie to you. You're being lied to. Kevin, it's not lies. What are you talking about? It's not helping you get away from the situation. It's lying to you. It's an effort to say there is no good and evil. This is why narcissistic abuse takes place today. We live in a world where there's a lot of people that don't want there to be this understanding of good and evil. The biggest lie is that good and evil exists. There is no dichotomy. That God does not want things separated. That God does not want things divided. This is why narcissistic abuse takes place. Even with the diagnosis of psychopath, sociopath, it's an effort to say, no, 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 these people aren't different than you. The, the, what they do is not that different from you. It's just that their upbringing has given them a little bit more. See what I'm saying? So not only have we been lied to that there is no evil. And by the way, there's many ways in which we've been lied to about that. One of the common ways in which we are lied to uh, about there not being good and evil is having unity. A lot of world leaders stand up and say, we need to unify. Let's unify. Well, who are they talking to? I'm not unifying with that guy and his ideas. If there's anything we've learned throughout ancient history, it's that unification is not sustainable. Not on a personal level. Unification always ends up looking like one group of people saying, this is what unity is while oppressing and abusing another group of people. Hitler and Stalin. We're trying to unify people, whatever the heck that means. And we all know what that evil, nasty debacle looked like. They're not the only ones. Ancient Egypt attempted to unify in the same way. They had the Egyptians and they had all the slaves and the oppressed. This is our unified society. So unification is not sustainable without trampling individuality god-given free will all right so we've been lied to that there is no good and evil just all people which has fed into us now having this over compassion and has caused us to mix and mingle in areas with people where we don't belong So your involvement with toxic relationships and narcissistically abusive people is not your fault. This is not a message about victim shaming. It's a message about understanding how you've been lied to in society, a society or a culture or in a world that is trying to get away from basic fundamental principles that govern the world like there's good and there's evil and they're separate. Instead, Allowing us all to come together and feel like, oh, we can all mix and mingle. Even modern day Christian church is a 
pe- they peddle and sell the same lie too with their open door policy. All are welcome. Why? Because all fall short of the glory of God. What's this doing again? It's separating. It's 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 lying. There's no good or no evil. There's no judgment. We're all the same. If you've killed a person physically, or if you have, uh, you know, called somebody weird, it's the same thing. You can still all come together. All come into the doors, right? And this is why most churches are filled with a mixture of psychopaths, sociopaths, and also people who are obedient. Again, the Cains of the world and the Abels of the world have been brought together because of the lie that there's no difference between them. When clearly, from the beginning of time, the ancient people were trying to tell us that there is a clear difference. Watch out. This is why. So what does narcissistic abuse now mean in your life? Oh, and I got one more example for you too. Uh, movies like Beauty and the Beast, right? Prime example. There's no difference between the beast and the beauty. The beast is just a little bit edgier. Love on the beast and you'll get to the person that's just like you, right? Lies. Lies trying to get you to believe there is no good and evil. There is. So narcissistic abuse has taken place in your life to thrust you out into division to be able to once again accept division as not only acceptable but necessary so if you feel like you've been divided from your family from your spouse you've been separated from your uh, marriage you've been separated from your job you've been separated from your siblings you've been separated from the part of the world that you knew it's because you are being thrust back into the understanding that there is differences. There is wrong. There is right. There is good. There is evil. And you're being thrown out of the presence of evil so you can stand back and look at it and say, wow, evil is real. What was I doing being a part of that? This is a time in our life where division is absolutely really happening. Now, I don't know about the second coming of Jesus or anything like that. We've all been promised that or threatened by that or however you perceive it for a long time now. All right. Now, I'm not saying it's not happening. Could happen tomorrow. Could happen next week. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, though. But what I do know for sure is that we are in a season where division is necessary, where we are being thrown away from the evil that we have been engaged with. We are now facing that evil is real, that we are not all the same. And we are being called back to gather to our own kind. We are being called to gather back to where we belong. To stop mingling with evil. To stop mingling with people we should not be mingling with. Back to a place of understanding that we live in a conditional world. Two of the primary conditions are there is good and there is evil. It's time to accept it. Again, it doesn't matter how you diagnose it, slap it, smack it, flip it. You can try to break down evil all you want. You can try to break down good all you want. They are solid principles that have been here since the foundations of this earth. You're not going to get any more answers than that from psychologists or doctors. If you want to know more about the breakdown of evil, you're going to have to wait until the next life. It's not for us to understand. All we need to understand is that it's real. Although we've been lied to, we've been lied to and told that good and evil aren't real. We're all the same. Uh uh-uh. uh. Good and evil is real, I assure you. And it's embodied through people. So be on your guard and watch out and take care of yourself. My name is Kevin and this is the Royal We. As I said before, I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one on one appointments with me. I do have telephone calls, video calls, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Zoom. It's all available for you. Jump down there also and check out the Royal Week Coaching Program. There's exciting things going on. Join this growing community that's going to continue to grow. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal Week. Before I leave, check this video out. YouTube is going to suggest you watch this video. And I don't know why, but I'm sure it's going to help you because YouTube has been spying on your viewing history. So you can trust that it knows what you're going to like to watch. Watch that. I'll be back. Bye.